The Reserve Bank of India today delivered a second consecutive 25 basis point rate cut uh, in two months on the back of growth and inflation pressures. But the Reserve Bank surprised the market by maintaining a neutral rather than a dovish tone. The Monetary Policy Committee voted 4 to 2 in favour of a rate cut of 25 basis, taking the repo rate now to its lowest level in a year to 6%. The RBI also cut the inflation forecast by 40 basis points to 2.9 to 3% for the first half of the current year and to 3.5 to 3.8 for the second half of the current financial year. But despite lowering inflation projections rather steeply, you know, by 40 basis points, the MPC voted 5 is to 1 to keep its stance, the stance of the monetary policy unchanged in neutral mode leaving the markets uh, perhaps wondering if there are any or many more rate cuts to follow. On the growth front, the Reserve Bank has also cut its projection for FY20 by 20 basis points to 7.2 from the earlier 7.4%. Listen to the big man himself. The inflation outlook remaining benign. The RBI will address the challenges to sustain growth of Indian economy while ensuring price stability on an enduring basis in pursuance of its mandate in the Reserve Bank of India Act. Okay, so given benign inflation, we will pursue growth. Uh, then why not a little more by way of dovishness? Okay, we'll come to that. Besides the policy actions, the Reserve Bank allowed banks to count an additional 2% of their SLR bonds, statutory liquidity ratio bonds, towards their overall liquidity coverage ratio. The long and the short of it means, this means that banks have to keep a little lesser part of their deposits in government bonds and therefore can lend two percentage point more of their deposits to borrowers. The Reserve Bank has also said that uh, its drive to force banks to link their retail and SME loans to external benchmarks is being deferred for now. The governor also indicated that the central bank will come out with a revised circular on bad loan resolution. This uh, is needed after the Supreme Court recently scrapped the, uh, uh, a similar circular which controls NPAs, which was issued on February 12th, 2018. The Honorable Supreme Court has said that the powers of RBI under Section 35AA have to be exercised in a particular manner. And the validity of the section 35 AA stands and henceforth we have to comply with the directions of the Supreme Court in this regard and act accordingly. In the light of Honorable Supreme Court order, the Reserve Bank of India will take necessary steps including issuance of a revised circular as may be necessary for expeditious and effective resolution of stressed assets. The RBI stands committed to maintain and enhance the momentum of resolution of stressed assets and adherence to credit discipline. Okay, well, that was the policy, the uh, key policy part and the other important uh, announcements for bankers. All markets, stocks, bonds and rupee fell after the policy announcements. Now, what are their worries? Welcome to the Monetary Policy Special. I'm Lata Venkatesh and with me is a high-powered panel of bankers and economists who are going to help us understand the immediate and the medium-term ramifications of this policy. With me are Dinesh Kumar Khara, Managing Director uh, uh, and of uh, uh, the GBS Global Business and uh, um, uh, Global Business Wing of SBI, Rajiv Anand, Executive Director, Wholesale Banking uh, of uh, Access Bank, B. Prasanna, Head of Global Markets, at uh, ICICI Bank and Pranjal Bhandari, Chief India Economist at HSBC. Gentlemen and lady, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, first to the lady, of course. Uh, what's the takeaway, Pranjal? Uh, how many more rate cuts, if any? Well, I think today Governor Das, you know, treaded the fine balance quite masterfully. Uh, there were definitely two parts to this policy. The first part was the 25 bips rate cut, which is consistent with the cut in the inflation and growth forecasts. And the second part uh, is the fact that it stuck to its neutral stance, didn't change it to accommodative, as many people had thought, uh, you know, he would. Uh, and I think the big reason for that is that they see a lot of upside risks 
in the horizon for the future. Uh, two of them are El Nino, a possibility of an El Nino by their own assessment could add 50 basis points to inflation, and the second is fiscal. There has been a lot of fiscal excesses in the economy for the last couple of years. Especially this year, we're seeing central governments, state governments, and public sector deficits and borrowings uh, remaining quite high and being quite excessive. So when your fiscal is so high, then it's, it's, you know, the monetary cannot be so high uh, also. So keeping all of that in mind, you know, they kept uh, the, the, the stance at neutral, uh, and I think that was, that was a very nice balancing act. Uh, with all of this behind us, uh, we think at the most there is space for 125 basis points rate cut, uh, you know, perhaps in the June meeting, if not June, then in the August meeting, okay. but that's about it. We don't see space for any more uh, beyond that. Okay, I will come back and revisit this point with you, uh, Pranjal. You know, I'm looking back. Uh, the last time the uh, uh, inflation rate was above 4% was in July of 2018. From August 2018, it is below 4%. And uh, the repo rate at that time was 6.5%. So we are running with uh, a 225 to 250 basis uh, real rate. Uh, for the past uh, six, eight months, it has only increased with, in, you know, increased to 300 basis points with inflation falling to 2%, uh, 2.1%. And now for the next 12 months, we are going to have, or at least the next six months, we are going to have inflation at 3% and uh, repo rate at 6, 300 basis points real repo no space to say accommodative i'm not yet convinced but i'll come to that in a minute first let's get to the here and the now in terms of what difference the policy makes to borrowers and depositors mr khara do not tell me that my rate is linked to the repo rate for the savings uh, uh, you know for the one lakh plus savings and therefore that will fall automatically we know that i'm asking you beyond that uh, are you likely to cut uh, any of your uh, you know, fixed uh, term deposit rates or your lending rates, or do you see the system itself passing on this in any fashion? Well, of course, we'll have to take that kind of a decision on the basis of the data which we'll collect and we will deliberate in our ELCO. But uh, what you mentioned in terms of uh, uh, the likely impact on uh, the deposit rates, mm. Uh, that is also a function of how the other instruments are uh, offering the interest rates. So that is, it's not merely the repo rate, it will, it will also be, of course, we have uh, sort of tried to uh, link up our deposit rates to the repo rate to some extent uh, for the deposits above 1 lakh rupees in the savings bank and uh, otherwise also. And likewise, when it comes to transmission, essentially from the point of view of the transmission for the loans, that we have linked up with the, with the repo rate. So that will, in any case, will have an impact because repo, the benchmark itself has changed, so that will have an impact on the loan rates. So that is what we are envisaging. Okay, so if I have an, uh, a home loan with SBI, I'm not getting lower EMIs now. Uh, well, uh, as far as we are making it effective from 1st of May, mm. this repo rate uh, link interest okay. rates, which would be effective from 1st of May. Okay. So at that point of time, you will perhaps have the, uh, have the benefit of the lower EMI also. Okay, I, I've seen a lot of advertisements, uh, so I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of customers. Okay, l now let me come to the NUB. Uh, Prasanna, uh, what is in this, what is in it for yields? The yield actually rose by 10 basis points after the rate cut. So interpret the yield market for us. How do you see it going from here on? So, uh, Lata, I think um, I will agree with uh, Pranjul on this. There's nothing much to complain about this policy because oh. most of the analysts actually went into the uh, policy with the expectations of a 25 basis point uh, uh, cut with a neutral stance. It was just that the market went a little ahead of it in the last uh, week or so, and there was a hope. Uh, that because of the uh, uh, dramatic slowdown in the global growth as well as the growth momentum slowing down in India as well as inflation being contained, a whole lot of reasons you can give. The market uh, probably uh, hoped that uh, uh, the governor will go or the MPC will uh, do a little bit uh, more uh, than a simple 25 basis point cut and that was either in the form of a higher a deeper cut of 50 basis points or it could have been in terms of changing the stance from neutral to accommodative or even it could have been in terms of a liquidity stance being aligned to the rate stance. Uh, so this was the combination with the market was uh, expecting at some level. And when the governor and the, when the MPC actually delivered uh, exactly as per script, uh, which is what uh, possibly you can argue that uh, the economy needs at this stage, 
uh, the market had to unwind some of the excesses of the last uh, uh, seven okay. days or ten days. So I think that in a nutshell exactly explains uh, why there was an uptick in uh, bond deals uh, post the uh, uh, the policy. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not a statement on the policy itself. It was just that the market went into the policy with much bigger expectations than uh, what ultimately came out. Okay. So, uh, Rajiv, uh, therefore, do you think anything changes for the borrower if the bond markets, uh, actually the yields have gone up, uh, then for a borrower nothing has changed? I think, um, you know, a couple of things have changed. One is, um, you know, the very tight liquidity conditions that we saw pre-31st March. I mean, clearly we've seen that uh, liquidity conditions in the marketplace have, you know, certainly improved thanks to government spending and so on and so forth. We, over the last few days, uh, we've seen a fairly sharp rally at the short end of the yield curve, although it's got, it, uh, it's sold off a little bit, um, you know, today. Uh, post the policy, but um, you know, as Prasanna was saying, it's a buy the rumor, sell the fact kind of reaction today. So I do believe that um, you know, as the pressure from currency in circulation uh, begins to ease off uh, post uh, the elections, uh, I think there is uh, there is some merit in terms of you know deposit rates coming off, uh, and then you know uh, you know MCLRs as a result of that you know coming off. But um, I mean, please don't look at this on a one to one basis mm -hmm. that. But I, th I think, you know, certainly... Will you all cut? I will access cut. Will the banking well system as, uh, cut? MCLR is down, but it'll take a little bit of time. Uh, you, you see rates falling uh, shortly? Uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, I think the first deposit rates need to come off. Uh, deposit rates need to come off. Um, you know, we're, we're still seeing, you know, fair amount of pressure on, on deposit growth relative to, to credit growth. And I think um, uh, until we get some sort of an equi equilibrium around that, I think uh, it's difficult for us to cut MCLR. I mean, remember that MCLR at the end of the day is a function of, of the marginal cost of money. Exactly. And so therefore, until the marginal cost of money begins to okay. come off, mm. uh, to expect uh, rates to come off on the other side is difficult. Well, let me squabble on this a little more. Prasanna. And, and, uh, just one point yeah, here. Sure, I, sure. I think we tend to, uh, tend to focus on, um, on the lender. I think mm. we've got to spend some time on the depositor as well. Fair point. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that completely. Uh, and but I then, think, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, whether it's the RBI or mm, the banks, mm. we've got to take care of the depositor as well. Mm. No, I, actually, you put your finger on it because incrementally, uh, credit is growing faster than deposits. If you looked at the Reserve Bank's uh, weekly uh, reportage for the last 8 or 12 weeks, uh, on several occasions, the uh, total aggregate amount of credit in the system has increased more than the aggregate amount of deposits. I'm not even looking at the percentage. Uh, so clearly, the depositor needs uh, to be pampered with higher interest rates, which means zilch transmission, isn't it, uh, uh, Prasanna? That's what I'm coming to. Since the RBI is not uh, able to transmit because at a balance sheet level, the system does not have enough deposits, uh, should it have, uh, or should it even in the future, go ahead and provide more liquidity? If instead of you borrowing from uh, the RBI, uh, if you were lending to the RBI even like, you know, 10, 20,000 crores, if it ensured that kind of surplus, will there be better transmission? Should uh, or will the RBI go that way? So um, I think you're right, uh, Lata. In fact, that is what I alluded to in my opening statement when I said that uh, the market was hoping for a liquidity stance getting aligned with the rate stance. Uh, so the feeling or the hope was that uh, because of the aggregate uh, deposit growth in the banking system, not really uh, capable of uh, handling the kind of credit growth uh, uh, that has been that's happening, that's been pushed by the banking system in aggregate, uh, which is to some extent a replacement of the NBFC growth and the mutual fund supporting the NBFC over the last uh, couple of years. So that is the kind of uh, uh, gap between the credit and the deposit uh, mobilization which is happening. And the other way to look at it is uh, there has been a, a tremendous amount of currency in circulation which mm. has been lost from the financial services uh, as a whole and that you can actually allude to maybe a whole lot of reasons and also the fact that there is a savings investment uh, gap uh, at the mm. end of the day we are having a current account deficit. So you can answer it from a philosophical uh, perspective also that we need to set right the current account deficit. But coming down to uh, the, uh, the, the liquidity stance again, I I do agree with you that uh, the behavior of a bank uh, will be uh, uh, will be quite uh, different when uh, even at the same interest rate. Uh, the behavior of the bank will be very, very different when he is giving money to RBI versus mm. he is taking money from RBI. Mm. So this uh, this particular point has been uh, discussed ad nauseum uh, earlier, 
And uh, I think at somewhere uh, the, the monetary policy did have a view that uh, uh, the liquidity stance has to be always kept tight irrespective of mm -hmm. whether the rate uh, uh, stands, uh, whether the rates are going down or up. Mm -hmm. But I think the market majority, uh, in, uh, most of the market participants as well as we at ICICI Bank do believe mm -hmm. that I think uh, the, the phenomenon of transmission should be linked to what part of the rate cycle you are. Mm -hmm. And if the, rate, if the rates are going up, you need to keep the liquidity tight. And if the rates are going down, you need to keep the liquidity in surplus mode. So I think that is why there was some expectations of uh, or the hope that RBI would uh, come out with a far more bolder uh, liquidity stance than what they actually came out with. In fact, they just said that they'll provide adequate liquidity yes. uh, for the system, which is basically a continuation of what they had said earlier. Mm. Uh, but they have their own reasons for that. They've taken a call maybe that they need to deliberate it a little bit more time. But I think uh, having said that, what you said is also right, that I do feel that transmission will be much better uh, if liquidity is in surplus mode in general. Okay. Well, if, if I had got a chance to ask another question, I would have tried to squeeze in and ask, is there a relook at liquidity at all? I did try to squeeze in that question, but uh, uh, the governor stuck to, uh, uh, you know, uh, answering that uh, they will look at all options. Uh, but uh, that's the question I really want uh, to ask. With inflation being at historic lows, at least compared to the last decade, and uh, growth uh, requiring help, why did the Reserve Bank not go for a bolder accommodative stance? That question to my participants after this very quick break.